Greetings. Welcome to Cyber Focus, your source for international business information. I'm your host, Brian Craven, and our guest today is Dr. Jane Rivas. Jane obtained her PhD in business administration from Tulane University in New Orleans and is originally an economic engineer. Her teaching experience in business started in 2004, when she was invited to teach in the MBA program in the IESA Business School in Venezuela. Jane was there for over eight years. She also taught in the business school of the University of Central Oklahoma before coming to the IU East campus. Her academic career is focused on the area of business strategy, specifically exploring those country institutional factors and individual factors of CEOs that affect business expansion into foreign markets. Recently, Jane's research is expanding into the area of looking at a firm's social strategies. Besides academic work, Jane is also a board member for a nonprofit organization called Amigos, which works for the development of diversity in Richmond, Indiana. All right, Jane, uh, thanks again for joining us today. I'm excited for our, uh, our conversation, our topic. It's on um, uh, a subject I haven't had a whole lot of experience with, so I'm interested to hear uh, your perspective and uh, a little bit more about it. Um, so you're going to speak to us a little bit about um, kind of the franchise system, but um, again, yeah, thanks, thanks for being here. Uh, well, I'm, I'm very glad to be here, Ryan. I believe this is a great initiative uh, from the IU Center uh, for International Business and Education Research. So, um, well, thank you so much for the invitation to participate. Yes, uh, I would like to, I have, I've been studying franchises um, as a business um, model uh, for, uh, for some years now. And I will be glad to talk about this topic and, you know, share things that I have been uh, working on. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, I, I have a limited experience with, with franchises. My uh, family had a, a, a small glass shop growing up, and it was a, it was a family-owned business, and then they purchased it. It stayed a family-owned business. Um, and, and sometime in that realm, they, they franchised um, with uh, another company, and uh, you know, we kind of got to see the kind of the, the, the good sides of that and then kind of the, the, the cons of that um, towards the end of that relationship. And um, so this is something that will be very interesting to hear um, kind of how the franchise system differs between um, local markets and the international markets. Well, that is a, a very good question. And the reason is because we have to understand two characteristics of the franchise business model in order to um, identify those um, differences, right? Uh, the franchise system model consists of a valuable routine. When someone decides to buy a franchise, what they are buying are a set of valuable routines, routines that are going to give money, a daily operation routines. And the other characteristic of franchise, we should know to identify the difference between local and international franchise, as this is a business model with two sides. We have the franchisor or the franchise owner, and then we have the franchisee, the, pe the person or the people who buy the routines, right? Someone produce, create the routines, another person buy those routines. With those characteristics, I'm going to tell you what is, the, what is the difference between local and international franchises. Local franchises are perfectly fit the environment, the business environment, because those routines were created in that specific environment, in the United States environment, let's say, right? We have here a way to understand the society, a way to understand, you know, the business, so that routine fit perfectly here. What happens when these routines or these franchise decide to go international? Well, we have an additional characteristic here. The environment change. What kind of environment? For example, the regulations change. What are the rules, or what are the regulations for starting a business, right? What are the regulations, for example, for employee? What happens is a government has a specific benefit, mandatory benefits for employees that we do not have here in the United States. That rise the cost. 
And that is very, usually this is obvious. However, we have another kind of environment that is not so easy to see. For example, the normative environment. The normative environment refers to a shared knowledge, right? A social rules. For example, someone may decide, I, I, I'm gonna tell you an example. One corporation decide to go international and they have a practice that is very uh, well accepted here in the United States. Offering uh, employ employment, like charity employment for all people, right? When they move to a different country where all people, where, where the society perceived uh, all people like a high valuable group of people, of, uh, a group of uh, people in the society, that practice was not very good for that environment. So that is, it's not a regulation, it's not a rule, it's something that is not right, but it's there. And that is a challenge for them. The last thing I want to tell you is that another environment is almost, is even more difficult to see it. The cognitive and cultural. What people think about the life, how they approach the life, how they, uh, what is the ideology? For example, what happens if you go to a different country where um, customer service is different? In the United States, customer service is very important. We hear a lot like, customers are the boss. Well, let me tell you, that may change in some countries. Customers are not the boss. So <laughs> what, how they can deal with this is a perception. I would say, in summary, that the difference is that Franchise, uh, local franchise have all the routines adapted to a specific environment where they were created. International franchise may find that those routines don't fit very well to the new environment. And we have different type of environment. And so that is, that would be my, my answer for it. Well, that makes uh, complete sense now that you kind of explain it that way from uh, you know, different different environments, different cultures have, uh, you know, what's socially acceptable, what is important to them. And in some of the examples that I've seen through different case studies and whatnot, uh, a lot of it comes down to uh, the the branding, the the name, the name recognition is, is a big piece of the franchise um, process as well how that brand or even the the item itself is seen um, and perceived, you know, in different markets in different countries. Uh, you know, McDonald's in the US is a is a fairly low cost convenience, you know, meal option versus in some areas you see it being more of a more of a luxury item than we necessarily would think of here in the U.S. Yes, the, the franchise brand is a is a very interesting um, area of the franchise model, uh, and it varies. It changes also according to the environment. Let me offer this. this uh, let me offer to you this example. Some franchises here in the United States are for fast food. People go to this uh, store this, uh, just to buy food very fast and go back to work, right? For example, the uh, fast food uh, franchises, usually people just go there, take the food because we are very busy here. We don't have time to spend on, you know, eating two hours in a local restaurant, blah, blah, blah. Well, some countries, for example, developing countries, uh, Venezuela, Colombia, uh, Ecuador, People go to those franchises during the weekend because it's a free time to enjoy with the family. They don't, they usually eat different kind of food, maybe made by themselves during the week, but they go to the franchise to enjoy a family time, to have like a party time. So they invite, even when the brand here is perceived, uh, well, something that I have to eat very fast, this is a good brand to, you know, to eat fast. There is, oh, this is a very good brand to, you know, have a party with my family. So the important thing here is how franchises move the brand, the image 
to the new environment. And that is part uh, about what, what we were talking uh, before. Franchise system has, have, or should understand the new environment to move successfully, successfully this brand. That is the point. How the how the how to understand the new environment so you can keep the quality of your brand and the brand you can project to the to people and to the population. Yeah, when uh, when somebody is is considering taking a, a new a new franchise or expanding that franchise into uh, another market, you know, we've we've talked about it a little bit, but could you kind of speak a little bit more to what are some of those important uh, points that they really need to to consider and be aware of? Yeah, I mean. Definitely, uh, there are some things that they have to uh, consider before going to inter before going international. And one thing I will say is that they have to be open mind, extend the understanding of the new environment. For example, regulation is, is as we said, it's easy to see. They have to do it. Otherwise, they cannot open a new business. That is easy. And is uh, I mean, it's right. It's perfectly right. But I invite the franchise owner to open your, their mind about more elements in the society. We have to side business, and we want uh, the franchisor wants to be successful because that is their business. And the franchisee is also invested on those business. So they want to be successful too. So I am... I think the best, the most important thing they have to know is that they need to see, open their mind about identifying other elements in the society that are not so obvious as a, a regulations. And I also believe that one thing can help is having a strategic analysis of the environment, the global, the general environment, not only about regulation. It's about understanding rules, understanding culture, so they can. Uh, improve the probability of survival in the new in the new country. That that is uh, what I believe. Uh, what can some franchise franchise owners do to kind of help avoid and navigate some of those ch uh, challenges specifically? Is there any uh, any tips or strategies that uh, would work out well? The franchise system not uh, they cannot always avoid the challenge, but they can learn. They can be prepared to face the challenge. Uh, for example, um, traditionally, one way to deal, to face those challenges is that with what they call monitoring franchises. You know, it's the perception that franchises are not following the, uh, the rule of the franchise system. So franchisors have to keep vigilant about what they're doing, right? From my point of view, that is... Um, that, that may work, but I like more to see this, uh, this model as two sides. So it's like a kind of collaboration. So thinking about this approach, I would say that each side has to take responsibility about understanding the environment. Franchisee has to know how their countries, how their routines can be applied in the country uh, where they live and how the brand can be developed in this new environment. But franchisor, they also want to, this business to be successful. So they must, uh, they have to work on understanding also the environment. Take responsibility of this. Uh, having, working on this strategic and uh, evaluation of the environment. And also, they, uh, franchises or franchisor must show flexibility. They must be willing to adapt the business model to the new environment. For example, what happened is in one country, people don't eat meat, right? And you want to start a, fran a hamburger uh, franchise, right? What happened there? So flexibility and adaptation is a very important way not to avoid the challenge, to deal, to face the challenge once you have it there. That is a, an important thing. Another thing I can I can say is that improving communication. In the I mean nowadays having the electronic uh, 
possibility for communication is very important. And the, the franchise uh, model should work in developing this kind of communication. The only thing, uh, the other thing that I have studied, and this is my personal uh, experience, is how franchisor and franchisee fit. For example, franchisee, a franchisee that share the values of a franchise model is more willing to implement the routines, to develop the brand, to participate in the, in the, fle- in the adaptation of the model. If, so, if one franchisee don't like the values, I mean, the probability of fail- the failure is high. It, from the other side, it's, it's also very similar. A franchisor who doesn't share uh, the value of a franchisee probably they are not going to work very well. Communication, adaptation, that kind of thing is not going to work very well. So I will say that um, this uh, fit, exploring the fit, the fit, improving communication, also working on a training program according to the environment are very good ways to deal, to face those challenge uh, besides you know, avoiding uh, any kind of problem in advance. Well, and I have two thoughts kind of that stem from um, from that conversation. I think one would be flexibility is is extremely important, uh, kind of across the board, but also you know, adapting those. You're adapting to the local culture from you know the brand, the franchise perspective of of what are you offering, what are you selling, what is your item or service, but also. You, having to have that flexibility within the culture of the franchise also for the employee base, you know, what employment practices and, uh, you know, doctrines work here in the U S won't necessarily work depending on which country you're in. Right. Um, yes, definitely. Uh, we are, we are talking here from the um, U S point of view, but think about franchises coming here from another country. Right. I mean, um, as an individual who immigrated to the United States, I found this uh, challenge in, this, uh, in my life. But think about a business where you have much more involved coming here with more regulations about how to uh, start a business, how to implement those routines. For example, if you are talking about the food uh, uh, industry, we have a very, very different regulations from, for example, Latin American countries to implement those kind of business. So, yes, definitely, I would say that uh, it's a, I mean, it's, it's a challenge for in either way. Absolutely. Um, and then kind of speaking of challenges and, and new and unique situations, um, how do you think the, uh, you know, kind of the COVID pandemic has affected or impacted or changed um, or have any specific challenges for kind of the franchisee, uh, franchisor relationship? Well, that is a very uh, current, this is a, an issue that is a black box right now for everybody, right? So new. And I will say that represent a challenge for the expansion of the new franchises. Franchises who are already um, working or are established in the different countries uh, may find, you know, it's still a challenge, but it will be more, more important for the new franchises to expand. And this is the reason, uh, Ryan, this is, a pro- this is the issue here. The pandemic imply more regulation, right? Imply more... Um, rules in the society depend on how people understand the problem in the society, right? So we will have more normative values here to show. We will have more regulation to face. For example, how uh, the religion understand this kind of uh, problem, right? How people think about interaction. Some countries, some cultures, they really appreciate the personal interaction, how this is going to be managed in the new environment. I would say really um, this represents a challenge, especially, especially 
for new franchises, but also depend on the area that the franchise is uh, is working. For example, a franchise that uh, imply a business model, a franchise that imply a lot of, a lot of interaction. That challenge will be bigger, right? Than a franchise that is not that doesn't necessarily uh, is based on this kind of interaction. Um, the um, in I mean my summary about this is that we are going to see more regulations, more social rules that can be new and also not clear because. Is we have some environment, some characteristic of the environment that they are not clear, easy to identify. Well, let me tell you something. Now, those characteristics may be more difficult to identify because they are new. They are not easy to see it. So this is what I think is going to uh, happen. And in these circumstances, the strategic analysis of the environment for expansion becomes more important, right? Before was important. Well, now is re- extremely important for business if they want to expand. Well, not only do they have to look at you know their own practices in relation to to COVID and their responses to that, but also how has the you know the expansion area that they're looking into how did they respond and how are those regulations? And to your point of, there's going to be so much more of that. Um, it's, it's going to be a very interesting and challenging time. Definitely. And I believe we will need some time to learn uh, what is going to happen. Yes, definitely. Perfect. Well, Jane, thanks again for uh, that insight and that information. Um, Thank you, Brian. It was uh, very nice to talk to you and share, you know, some ideas about this topic. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's it for this edition of Cyber Focus. For future suggestions of topics and questions, please drop us a line at cyber at indiana.edu.